back on the Father. It's something that you have to constantly do. You know, the Word of God said that um, the Lord is a jealous God. If you really think about it, what does it mean when it says that the Lord is a jealous God? It's dealing with the fact that the Holy Spirit is constantly guiding you to pay attention to the Lord. So you have to look at your life and really recognize, am I really paying attention to the Holy Spirit the way that I'm created to pay attention to him? And if you're not, you have to repent of that and get it corrected. Every moment, the Holy Spirit wants to guide a person throughout their life because on the day of judgment, what you're going to be getting judged for is how well you obeyed his script. So if, if, if God didn't want you to say, Timothy is a liar, and you say, Timothy is a liar, every idle word, you're going to be judged. That's what uh, the Lord was teaching them. Every idle word a man shall give an account of it on the day of judgment. You're going to be judged for how well you pursued the Holy Spirit inside of your decisions, how well you pursued. Now, what did Proverbs chapter three said? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. So everybody has their own understanding. Now, your own understanding, it strips favor. The Bible says, I believe that's Proverbs 13, 15, but sometimes that Proverbs 15, 13 could get mixed up. But I think it's Proverbs 13, 15 that say that a good understanding give it favor. So your own understanding steals favor. It takes favor away. So good understanding give it favor, but your own understanding takes favor away. So everybody's sin when they sin, they're operating in their own understanding because it was their own understanding that caused them to arrive at that decision that was wrong. So the world has to be detoxed out of everybody. You know, even you're going to be judged because God put you on Facebook to hear the word. But you get on Facebook and watch gossip. You get on Facebook and watch things that are deteriorating your spirituality. You're becoming more carnal. So God going to judge everybody on how you dealt with where he placed you. OK, I pitch you here and you let your own understanding guide you when you got there. The same way God will give you a workplace and you talking about I'm looking for a wife here. And the Holy Spirit didn't bring you there to find a wife. He brought you there so he can minister seed so that you could sow your way out and honor him. But you would take it according to your own understanding. I'm going to do this. You have to be careful. That when God places you somewhere, you don't take it and steal it from God of the purpose of why he put you there. He put you there for a reason. Now, if you steal it. Iniquity starts to bubble within your heart. See, the children of Israel didn't recognize their purpose wasn't to look on the menu for food. Their purpose was to worship God like they promised. So now they're up there magnifying food. We want meat. We want flesh. We want this. And they're magnifying an idol. That's causing iniquity to bubble up inside of them. So always remember this. The Holy Spirit tests everybody when he places you somewhere to see if you're going to intercept the purpose of why he placed you there. Job's wife. Magnified a purpose to curse God. When she was there to bless God by helping Job. But she captured a wrong purpose, right destiny, wrong purpose, good understanding got her there, own understanding took her from there. The same way Judas is called to be disciple. Good understanding gets him to handle the money bag Own understanding gets him to betray Jesus. Gehazi, good understanding makes him top servant. Own understanding causes him 
to casualize Elisha, take from Naaman when the instruction from Elisha is, I'm not taking anything from you. So as you can see all throughout life, people have their own space of choices on whether or not you're going to stay in good understanding or own understanding is going to corrupt you. The Bible says, if you sow to the flesh of the flesh, you reap corruption. So if somebody starts sowing to the flesh, though they were sowing to the spirit before, it doesn't matter how well they blossomed in the spirit, they'll become crumbled and deformed in the flesh all over again. So if you're taking notes, write this down. Consistency is enmity with the recruiting system of unclean spirits. Consistency is enmity with the recruiting system of unclean spirits. Unclean spirits recruit people when they're drifting. And unclean spirits recruit people that are worthless. In Proverbs, it talks about the worthless person. Worthless people do worthless things. You are how you think. If you think of yourself and it produces self-destruction, wrong decisions, the Bible calls you a fool, a worthless person. People that understand their words have a good understanding of submission, rejecting self, going against the body, following a new pattern of persistence, a new pattern of purity. Purity is not obtained in one moment. Purity is the traveling route that discipline contains. Discipline is self-control, the ability to override an emotion, the ability to override a mindset, the ability to cast down a thought. Apostolic grace is choosing the mind of God over the mind of the flesh. Apostolic grace. Apostles are first, not the prophet. Apostles are first because apostles are overcomers of bodily signals. That's why though the body of Jesus is being beaten, the mouth of Jesus is still submitted. The body of Jesus is being hit, but the reaction of Jesus' body is purity. You become your temperance or your anxiety. Remember, anxiety is the destruction of hedges. You leave a hedge when you're anxious. At the end of your life, you'll find out that you spent your time wrong. When you could have read the word, you read blogs. When you could have studied the Lord while he was teaching you the word, you studied your flesh and your own dreams and your own desires. Hell is overpopulated because people are more dedicated to their own self rather than the God that made them exist. Heaven is a place for people that laid down all that was self-inflicted, self-inspired, self-influenced, and they pursued the will of the one that built them. Psalm 100 talked about serving the Lord with gladness. But people have chosen to serve the Lord with madness and madness is insanity and insanity is the retrieving of old habits. Insanity is the retrieving of old habits. Insanity is backsliding back into a bad thought, a bad word, a bad relationship, a bad flow of schedule. When you break the hedge that God gives you, you become anxious to, 
to experience everything that you operate in self-control to avoid. That's why oftentimes teenagers love the teenage years when they start hanging with friends and going to movies. They love that because now they're going to start going into activities that you didn't accept. That's why a teenager becomes combative at a certain age, because they're ready to spread their wings, which is really satanic wings. Because they only could fly into the second heaven, not God's heaven, not the throne of God. They only can ascend into satanic activity. Love the restriction of God on your life. Love it or you'll lose it. Whatever you don't love from God, you'll lose from God. The thief is the realm of stealing what God imparted. The thief doesn't have any underlying, underlining effect without there being something given from God to you that the thief took. The thief is a dimension where Satan robs somebody of their progress, their prosperity in their soul, their peace in their mind, their joy in their heart, their wisdom, their understanding, their self-control, their faithfulness. Favor is given to all somehow, some way, but increased favor is given to the wise. God gives favor even to the fool, but he increases favor with the wise. Wisdom can be lost in a day, in a week, through weariness. Weariness drops a mantle, but worship carries the mantle. When Jesus was going to the cross, there was a man that helped Jesus carry the cross. What is the whole revelation on that? The man could not help Jesus without tapping into worship. Worship created a thought life that caused him to respect Jesus' need for his body to carry something that was anointed. The cross is anointed today because when anybody, they preach the cross, receive the cross, all healing, all benefits, all Demonic possession, all abundance is given to them. 